every other week it seems like data prices are just going up. Of course, we could blame it on our depreciating currency, but even in the USD era, data was not what the typical Zimbo would term affordable. So, for example, in 2016, Zimbabwe had the third most expensive internet in Africa, with one gig of net one data going for 30 US dollars. It's wild, I know, but before we get to answering the question of why the internet is so expensive in Zimbabwe, we need just a basic understanding of how the internet works. How does the internet get to Zimbabwe? The internet is basically a connection of a lot of computers. If you search for a picture of a Samsung right now on the internet, all you are doing is using whatever network you have to connect to a computer somewhere in the world where that Samsung picture is stored. So basically the internet is one big network of all devices that can connect to the internet. That said, how does an email from someone in China get to me in Zimbabwe? Or how can I watch a live football match in Spain in my bed on my tablet using DSTV now? Well, that happens thanks to two things really, satellites and undersea cables. These two technologies are essentially the backbone of the internet as they connect continents to each other. But then even on land, there are still massive cable networks, usually fiber optic cables, which take over from where the satellites and undersea cables end to get the connection to the world closer to your doorstep. So between the cameraman in Spain filming the soccer match and your tablet with DSTV now streaming this match live, there are a lot of different companies involved. And this will be a very big simplification of it, but it should be enough to paint a picture. From the camera filming the match, the feed goes to a computer connected to a local internet service provider or ISP like Utande or a mobile network operator like Econet. MNOs or ISPs then go through internet access providers like TL1 or Liquid Intelligent Technologies who then either choose to use an undersea cable or satellite to send this feed to the rest of the world. This means they go through other companies like Utilsat for satellite or Seacom for undersea cables. The reverse happens from here till the feed reaches its intended destination. Liquid takes over from Seacom, Econet takes over from Liquid, and your tablet plays soccer live. As you can see, there are quite a number of middlemen involved and they all need to get paid in real money. So let's talk about money. <laughs> A telecoms operator pays a lot of money for a lot of stuff, so much so that we actually need to break it down into some categories. Bandwidth is pretty much the data rate of your internet connection. When the internet is priced for ISPs and ISPs, it's in traffic volume and not really data consumption. We can go into the weeds on this later, but higher transfer rates cost more because bandwidth is a limited resource. A number of you in the TechZim community always complain that the 4G speeds in Zimbabwe are essentially good 3G speeds. This can be because of several reasons, with one of them being that the base station you are connected to is getting overwhelmed by the traffic it is facing. But the cost of bandwidth is something that internet providers then consider before they decide on the speed of internet they can give you without making it too expensive because the faster the internet, the more expensive it will be. Zimbabwe is a landlocked country and because of this, IAPs have to lay down infrastructure to connect to the world by either setting up a satellite like the Mazoe Earth Station that Taiwan uses or a fiber network that Liquid Intelligent Solutions has been laying all over Africa. <laughs> this is an added cost that internet providers factor into the pricing of their data and this is just to get the connections done for access. 
a lot of technologies involved in telecommunications with most of the equipment being brought by order and from the manufacturer. How this equipment performs depends on the quality of hardware but more crucially how sound the software running on this hardware is. This makes the equipment very sophisticated to a point where support comes from the guys who make the equipment. And most of them are based in Europe and Asia, meaning if a critical systems update needs to be done or a new technology has to be put up, they have to fly these experts in. Moreover, the software used to manage these systems is licensed software that is paid for on a subscription basis. Again, money is being spent just to keep everything running smoothly. Just like any registered business, you need to be licensed to operate. And it's not very cheap. For fixed telecom operators like Tel1 and Liquid Home, they are looking at a hundred million US dollars for a 20 year license. And for MNOs like Econet, Net1 and Telesil, that is a cool 137 million US dollars for the same 20 year license. It's definitely not cheap. And it is a very significant chunk of their revenue. We can look at Econet as a case study because, well, they are the biggest MNO in Zimbabwe and they have their data online. In 2021, their total revenue was 35 billion Zim dollars, which at the RBZ interbank rate of 108 to a US dollar, it meant that in US dollar terms, Econet's revenue was around 325 million. This is before we remove overheads like licenses we mentioned before, wages, utilities, legal fees, etc. Every year, Econet will need to pay 6.85 million on top of these said overheads. Just for comparison, we can take our neighbor Zambia, where the operator license is 1 million US dollars valid for 10 years, which is still 100,000 US dollars per year versus 6.85 million per year in Zim. An operator license in Zim is 68.5 times more expensive than in Zambia, which is also coincidentally a landlocked country. In 2014, there was a 5% excise duty tax applied to all airtime purchases. Another 5% tax was proposed in 2017, this time labeled as a health levy. Then in February 2022, a 10% tax was imposed on all internet and VoIP services in Zimbabwe. All these costs are not absorbed by the telcos, but rather are just pushed to the public through increased costs of internet and voice services. And these just come in whichever way, shape and form, which keeps driving the prices of data up. So every business everywhere in the world has to deal with overheads like utilities, security and general service and maintenance. But this is Zimbabwe, and as such, some of these overheads are a much bigger cost than outside of the Zimbabwe. The biggest one lately has been the availability of power. The electricity supply in Zimbabwe has been abysmal for the past couple of years. It's been so bad that standby generators on telco's infrastructure have to be asked to run continuously for 12 hours in several instances. This is an expensive source of power compounded by the fact that fuel is sold in USDs whilst telecoms operators have to be selling their internet and voice services in Zim dollars. And if you are following, the Zim dollar has lost three and a half times its value in the last six months, according to the RBZ auction rates, whilst tariffs for telecoms operators have not managed to keep up with the loss in value of the Zim dollar. Some MNOs are now spending money to get more affordable sources of power, which in this case is solar. Econet has actually installed around 520 Tesla power walls in 260 of their base stations so they can run on this cheaper solar energy. The power issue is a Zimbabwean problem and even we the citizens are going the solar route, meaning the demand for solar systems is at an all time high. So is the case of vandalism of telecommunication sites from individuals desperate to make ends meet by stealing solar panels and lithium batteries. This is again a problem inflating operating costs for MNOs as it adds downtime to their operations and forces them to spend capex 
replacing hardware prematurely. Fixed telecom operators are not spread either, especially Tel1 which has the largest ADSL network in the country. This ADSL network uses copper cables as a transmission medium to get the internet to your home. Because of the price that copper fetches as scrap metal, it's another target for vandals who steal it to sell and gain a quick buck. It's so bad to the point that there is a 10 year jail sentence in Zimbabwe for anyone caught stealing these copper cables. Now it becomes a bigger problem when you see that all these expenses I have outlined are paid for in Forex and we are buying all our airtime and data in Zim dollars, meaning the telecoms operators have to convert this Zim dollar to Forex at the RBZ. But we have a massive Forex shortage in Zimbabwe to the point that the RBZ developed a Forex auction system where those that need Forex can bid for it and keep their fingers crossed that they win the bid. And even then, the available Forex isn't enough to fully satisfy the demand. We are not a lot in Zimbabwe. Our population is 14.8 million in total, with less than half of this population living in the urban areas and using internet. For telecom operators to make reasonable margins, they need to have a lot of active subscribers and the more active subscribers they have, the more these costs that they incur can be spread over a greater subscription base, therefore driving the cost of internet and voice services lower. At the end of the day, telcos are businesses. They need to make money and fend off competition. So. It will not do them any good if they make their services so expensive that no one can afford them. They'll just lose customers to the competition and eventually go broke. Making their services dirt cheap is also a problem because they have all these expenses we talked about that they need to cover for them to stay running. Otherwise, the quality of service will take a nosedive and again, customers will move to the competition. Personally, I believe that telcos and Zim are being as reasonable as they possibly can given the operating environment, with some not having even seen a profit in decades. Regardless, I want you to let me know what you think. Are the costs of data in Zimbabwe justified? Thanks for watching.